Today you'll learn how to create this cinematic Blender logo image. With this technique you can pretty much use any logo you like, but I'm using the Blender logo because today is Blender's 30th year anniversary. I'm going to teach you some very important principles of cinema in less than 10 minutes. Everybody can do it if you follow these 7 simple steps, so this is what you're going to learn. We're going to import an SVG file and turn it into a mesh. Then we're going to add text and change the font, set up a quick and easy background, then we're going to give some simple procedural textures to our materials, and after that we're diving into lighting and some useful tools that you can use to choose your colors, and I'm quite certain you'll like this part, and then we're going to add depth to the scene with the camera and the principled volume. And finally, we'll use DaVinci Resolve, which is free, to finalize the image so that it goes from this to this. It sounds like a lot, but trust me, it's very simple and can be done in less than 10 minutes. So without further ado, let's get started. So we're going to delete all of that. And now we can go over to import scalable factor graphics. And here I'm going to search for Blender in my downloads folder because I just downloaded the SVG logo. Now, you might not see anything, don't worry. Just select it like this because it's really small right over there. And we're going to scale it up. Very good. And now what we can do is we can give some geometry to this by pressing on this tab. And in the geometry section, we can choose to extrude. And then for the bevel, we can round off the edges like this. Oh, be very gentle with it. 0.003 will do the trick. There you go. I'm going to select this, extrude, and just going to choose the same depth, 0 0.0003. There you go, 0 0.0003. And now it has some cool beveled edges. So we're going to convert this to a mesh, Control J, and now it's all together. RC90, RY90, and now we have our Blender logo set up like this. Just going to place a camera right here. And we can turn this up like this. Now I'm going to add a text. Text can be rotated, RC90, RY90. I'm going to type 2024. And I want to change the font of this. So I'm going over into this text tab. And right here we can open the font map. And here I'm going to select impact. And it already looks a little bit better. So I'm going to scale this up, bring it right over here like this. And it needs some geometry as well, so we're going to extrude it like so. And also give it a little bit of depth like that. Now place it behind the logo. It's still pretty close to the Blender logo, I guess. So I'm going to place it like this and increase it some more. Now we need a floor for this. I'm just going to make a plane. Maybe grab this outer edge, extrude it upwards. Then we're going to take this one and bevel it. Uh, but first, let's apply the skill. Control B, bevel it, and give it a whole lot of subdivisions to make it look decent. I'm going to select our camera. Go over to viewport display, passe partout, and right here we can make our background outside of the camera disappear. Let's head over to the render tab so we can see what we're doing. We're going to decrease the strength all the way to zero, and let's add a uh, area light. Now we're going to change the power of the area light to make it look like this. Not bad at all. I'm going to select our background. Going over into the shader editor, right over here. Let's make it metallic. Now we're going to decrease the roughness. Looks pretty cool already. I'm going to shade smooth our background because it showed some artifacting right over there. I'm going to give a texture to this 2024. So I'm going to increase the metallic, decrease the roughness. It's kind of shiny right now. That's all right. 
And maybe we can do something with the lighting over here. So let's add an area light. Maybe we can turn it around like so. Place it right over here. And then decrease the spread by a whole lot and increase the strength. Maybe make it orange. Now we've got orange right over there. I'm going to duplicate this, bring it to the other side, like so. RC, turn it around like this. And now we'll make this blue. To get some nice color contrast in there. By the way, I'm using blue and orange because they are color contrasting colors. Let's have a look right here at Canva color wheel. And right here in the first link, you can see you get complementary colors. So what do you do? You set it to blue and orange. And what do you have? They are opposed to each other, which gives a very nice cinematic contrast. So that's why we do that. A lighting from above like this. Increase the strength a little bit. Now let's hop over to our camera and go right over here. Select depth of field. Select our blender object and then change the f-stop until it looks something like this. So now we've got this cool bokeh background. We've got the Blender logo. So maybe we can add a volumetric. So let's add a giant box and do it like this. Do it like that. New, delete the principled BSDF and bring in a principled volume. Plug the volume into the volume slot and change the density. Really subtle, but it looks a lot better. So we're going to roll with it. Maybe this area light could be a little bit stronger, maybe around 1000. And then this one should be around 1000 as well. And this is the final result render image. So we're in DaVinci Resolve right now and I'm going into my pictures, Blender Cinematic, and I'm going to place it right over here. I'm not going to do anything fancy with this, I'm just going to color grade a little bit. So let's head over to the color tab. Alright, so on this second note, I am going to change the exposure. Maybe I want it to be a little bit lighter, just something like this. Then on this note, I'm going to increase the contrast. Make it pretty contrasty. Like this. And this is what it looks like right now. And I'm seeing that the orange is very heavy overpowered. So maybe we can just drag this offset slider a little bit to the left. Down a bit. And now as you can see, this part over here is pretty much in the same range as this part over here. So it has the same length approximately. And this really changes the render a lot. A lot more balanced, which is the goal of this note. So if I were to name this, I can go over here and give the note a label. This one is the exposure. Note label. Contrast. Note label. Balance. Now that we've got that, we can actually work on the render. So I'm going to deselect this link group, press red, and there's a lot of red right over here. I'm just going to pick a point over here, and I'm going to increase the reds a little bit. And then I'm going into the blues, and there's a lot of blue over here. So I'm going to select the blue right here and make a shape like this to increase the blues. And now I want some greens in the same range as the blues as well. So we're going to do somewhat the same, like, like this. I'm going to decrease the output a little bit to around half. So now it looks pretty good. Go to the RGB mixer, increase the reds, increase the greens, increase the blues. Very saturated. So into the key output once again. 
we're going to bring it down until we reach a point that we like. I think somewhere over here seems saturated enough to my liking. So what I like to do for my blender renders is I add a sharpen. Now that looks pretty sharp. And as a finishing touch, I am going to add a vignette. Maybe a vignette will look nice. So right over here in the mass tab, select the circle, increase the circle size, increase the aspect, increase the softness. We want it to be inverted and this little button is what makes sure it's inverted. And then right over here, we can link everything back together and decrease like this. As you can see, this is what it does. So I'm just going to make it very extreme, but I'm not going to actually do that. I'm just going to leave it something like this. And as you can see, this really makes you focus more in the center instead of having too many bright lights over here. So that looks pretty cool. Maybe it's a little bit too much. So I'm going to decrease it slightly. Yeah, something like this. Yeah, that's the way. And actually what I forgot to do is to try whether a glow would be nice. So I'm going to add a glow. Ah, actually that does look kind of nice. Straight out of the box. And I'm going to play around with the global blend and see what I like most. But I actually like it on the top strength. So just for reference, this is what it looked like before. Straight out of the box. And this is what it looked like after compositing. Just so you know, your render is not done after you press F12. Okay? This is what you have to do in order to just take it to a next level. The last thing we're going to add, all this is a film grain and we have to zoom in for this one yeah, as you can see there's no film grain at all but if you add this there's film grain looks pretty decent already but i like to use the 500t 60 millimeter 500t and i'm going to increase the texture a bit the grain size should be a little bit smaller grain strength don't push the grain strength too much, but you can push it just a little bit. This emulates an effect that we get in old cameras. So, one more time. Before and after. So I hope you've got a beautiful render yourself. And if you want to know how to learn Blender as fast as possible, then I highly recommend watching this video next.